Well, we were off on another photographic adventure, this time to Flinders Island off Tasmania's northeast coast. Leaving from an airstrip just outside of Bridport, Roger, Rex and I were flown by pilot Frank along the northeast coast, across Bank Strait and to Whitemark. After about half an hour, we flew over the shallow Parry's Bay on our approach to the airstrip at Whitemark. <laughs> How are you going? Well, this is June. How are you going, June? What do you, what do you the chugger thing? What do you protect? Whatever moves. Well, let's go and check out our accommodation. Our ground, look, the bread maker is on, cooking bread for us. Look at this, we can even wash clothes. Uh, check this out, oh, nice floor. There's our kitchen that'll never be used. <laughs> no, I'm only joking, we're master chefs here. There's our driver, he's been. Jeez, mate, it's nice, isn't it? Oh, look, they've obviously picked us up, mate. Look, she's put Flinders Island's photography books here. Oh, mate. Holy guacamole. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, wow. Nice toilet. Here we are at Trousers Point, and I couldn't let my uh, curried scallop pie go to waste. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Mm. There's Roger filming away, and there's Jeff down there filming. Worth another photo, go for it. Much of Flinders Island on the west coast is granite country with lichen covered rocks and boulders. I had recently purchased a quadcopter for shooting aerial photos and video. Here was a good place to try it out in the calm conditions. <laughs> Jeff, you make me want to get one, you bastard. Because it was an overcast day, the lighting was subdued, but the colours were still impressive. Look at that. Hey, eh? Holy guacamole. And it's flying back towards us now. Unbelievable! Specky! Holy God! Look at his... Look at how high up it's going! <laughs> With the cloud-covered Streslicky Ranges as a backdrop, I did a quick tour of Trousers Point.
The quadcopter allowed us to get a special perspective on the area, looking north to Whitemark and Prime Sea Lion off the west coast of Flinders Island. To the west lay Mount Chapel Island, home of the largest tiger snakes in Australia. To get some idea of the height of the quadcopter, if you look carefully you can see me standing in the middle of the beach below. And then south to Cape Barren Island and back to the bay. He's, he's flown it well though, hasn't he? Mind, uh, we need to bear in mind he's already lost one of these. <laughs> yeah, crashed one. <laughs> Something's gone wrong. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, what's happened? Just trying to work out what that is. Oh shit, is that us that? Oh, this could put a bit of a dampener. No, there's plenty of oil under here. We've had a bit of an oil leak. Just a, that's all oil folks, all that glibbers. Ah <laughs> uh, well we're where Frank Willibrand parks his car beside the little shed. Okadoke. Uh, we fly out at 3.30 Friday. Friday, yep. Alright, um, so yeah, I don't think there's any major damage. As I said, the uh, small stone chips and stuff we don't yeah. charge for. Yeah. Um, it's all just... In with the magna. This is a bit of a culture shock, isn't it? <laughs> Look. <laughs> the Roger's looking like the Jesse you can at the moment driving this good. <laughs> what do you reckon, Jeff? What? About life in general. Well, we're here. Well done, Jeff. You're nearly there. I think. All right, trick station. After dinner at the White Park Hotel, we climbed Hayes Hill to view the sunset. Next morning, it was still overcast, and we travelled to the Patriarchs a series of low mountains on the east coast of the island. Here we found the wildlife sanctuary created by Derek Smith and the Patriarch Trust. The A-frame building contains a vast collection of information and photographs of the project and the wildlife found in the area. The wallabies were obviously used to being fed, and Rex exploited this to the full. <laughs> he eats like me. He's got his head in the trough. <laughs> He's got the best seat in the house. I wasn't sure because I was looking along the path. 
like this or anything even mention it. This abandoned farm was proclaimed a sanctuary and a conservation area. Described to be a conser conservation area, such area to be known as the Patriarch's Wildlife Sanctuary, 6 of the 7th, 1970. Oh, I need to touch you, sorry. <laughs> what have I broken? We then travelled out to Cameron's Inlet, where to my dismay, my quadcopter failed to respond and crashed into our car. So much of flying over the inlet and the prolific bird life. Got his beady on us. I suppose Flinders Island without Mount Strickley, Stray's Lake, wouldn't be very much, would it? No. Travelling south, we called into Lady Barron on the southeast coast of the island. This is the main port on the island. The roll and roll off ferry from the Furno Shipping Company shuttled between here and Bridport on a regular basis. That afternoon we went north to Amita and were surprised at how much the Furno Museum had progressed with the building of a new centre. The collections inside tell the many stories of the early days of the island, from the Tasmanian Aborigines to the soldier settlement days and the many shipwrecks in the turbulent waters. Bev, he's on the diet. Have a look at this, will you? <laughs> After dinner, once again we went out to look at the sunset, even if the mosquitoes and sandflies were hungry. Next day I cajoled Rex and Roger into a very early start to get views from Mount Walker. It's a beautiful scene out here today up on the top of Mount Walker. You can't see for anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Then we travel north to Leeka, stopping to photograph an abandoned farmhouse overlooking Tanner's Bay.
back to Sawyers Bay with its collection of lichen covered boulders. At Port Davies, we read about the mutton birds or shearwaters. And the fledging chicks remain in the colonies for another two, three weeks. They fly all the way up to the Bering Sea. Unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Did some people put their hands down the nest and get bitten by a snake? Yeah, that's very true. It was here at Waibalina that most of the remaining Aborigines mustered by George Augustus Robinson were taken in 1833. Despite Robinson's care and attention and the construction of a substantial settlement, the Aborigines continued to die and in 1847 only 45 remained. These were taken to Oyster Cove south of Hobart. After the removal of the Tasmanian Aborigines, the land was taken up as a farm and the settlement buildings dismantled. The old shearing shed and discarded farm equipment still remain. The old chapel was once used as a shearing shed but in 1973 it was purchased and restored by the Flinders Island branch of the National Trust. Don't tell me, we can't get in. <laughs> Before the restoration, bricks were salvaged from nearby ruins, while most of the rafters are original. The church and cemetery at Waibalina are a sad reminder of a difficult and controversial episode in Tasmania's early history. Tribal elder Auntie Ida West's healing garden and commemorative table are part of a move to heal the rift between the indigenous and current population of Tasmania. Uh, we're heading up to, what's it, East River, isn't it? East River. North East River is a large inlet, well stocked with fish and bird life, a popular camping and fishing area. The eastern side of Flinders Island is a huge sandy beach which stretches virtually the full 50 kilometre length of the island.
Returning back along the north coast of the island, we called in at Palana, set in a picturesque Blythe Bay. These tall aloe vera plants are often associated with older settlements as they were planted for use in medicine and making rope. A visit to Long Point to watch the sunset was less than successful. Back to the White Mark Hotel and we enjoyed another fine meal. <laughs> what have these guys been up to? <laughs> Great advertisement. Look here. How many bottles is that now? Three. <laughs> Friday, our last day of the trip, so I was back at the north of the island. On the way to the dock, we captured a few shots of the nervous black cockatoos, who kept a wary eye on our photographic proceedings. The steep walk down it's to the coast is cranky. well worth the effort. We're heading down for some shots, hopefully. I think we'll be doing the coastal shots, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we met a group of rock climbers camped near the beach and hoping we could get some photos and video of them climbing. I knew about the docks area and its beauty from an earlier sea kayaking trip six years before. We're in search of some rock climbers, but I don't know if we're going to find them. <laughs> Can't see any up there. What was that, Jeff? I missed that. I had it on. Who the fuck is Ben Hills? <laughs> Look, there's still a view over the side there, Jeff. Sit back, take it in.
We hurried back to White Mark to catch the plane, but had sufficient time for some excellent food and rest in the White Mark Cafe. But Abba, look at this. This is a Flinders Island lumberjack. Not the salt with an axe. Rex, as usual, couldn't resist a freshly baked local speciality. It's going to be a bit hard to take. I think it's going to be me. <laughs> Oh, had a great trip. Has anyone seen Jeff, by the way? He's over behind the camera again. <laughs> there was some doubt about our flight, as the low cloud was down to 400 metres. In fact, some other flights were cancelled. Frank explained he would take off, fly low under the cloud, staying close to the coast. If things got worse, he would return to Whitemark. After a few nervous minutes flying parallel to Mount Streslecki, we could see sunshine and a clearing, and then we were above the clouds. We pass well north of the top of Mount Munro on Cape Barren Island. We were soon over Croppies Point on Tasmania's northeast coast and flying over the Waterhouse area with its long sandy beaches and sand dunes. Pivot irrigator paddocks of potatoes and Richard Sattler's Lost Farm airstrip came into view. Finally, we had a bumpy landing on the bush airstrip near Bridport. 
This had been a very successful visit to Flinders Island, one that we will no doubt repeat. And now I must repair my quadcopter. Thanks, buddy.